Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan. Um, yeah, this video is probably going to be hard to make and I'm probably going to make it in multiple parts as well. Um, I, yeah, I guess this is something that like weighs heavy on me and I guess talking about it is good and letting people know where I come from is good too. And just being honest is obviously always good. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, I just want to talk about, like, what, how my life has been. Like, being in the public eye, being in the, the press and the media since I was 13. And being very out and very, very visible. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, my first press, I was, I came out when I was 12, started coming out as queer when I was 12, and then my first press publication, I was 13, that was in Go Magazine, which was, like, the biggest lesbian magazine at the time, so I had a big article in there, um, because I gave a keynote speech at the LGBT Center about bullying and how they saved my life, the Long Island LGBT Center, so that was my first press, and from there, it just, um, it just got more and more and more, and, um, since then, I haven't really gotten a break from the press, I haven't gotten a break from being talked about on the internet, and I know it's small scale, like, it's way smaller scale than, like, Justin Bieber, right, or whoever, right, even, like, other trans people, it's smaller scale, but, like, it's, um, it's a lot, it's a lot still, um, it's a lot to carry, and, you know, going on TV when I was 15, and then again when, um, I had just turned 17, so being a teenager with a tremendous amount of pressure, a tremendous amount of responsibility on me, and I do have, um, a lot of regrets, like, and I don't regret that I grew up in on the media and I don't regret that I grew up all over the internet and posting my life story, but I do regret a lot of my actions as a teenager, you know, and I'm sure every single person in this earth made mistakes when they were a teenager. Um, and a lot of them, you know, I've still been judged for them today and that's hurtful. And like, I understand, like, I understand that people are hurt by actions that I had when I was younger. Um, the same way people are hurt by actions that Justin Bieber had when he was younger. Um, but like, my life has been in the spotlight and under a lot of pressure and it doesn't excuse anything that I've done. And I'm always willing to be accountable and have conversations. Like, I'm very willing to have very, very uncomfortable conversations so that I could be better, do better, apologize make right with any people that still feel hurt so if you are one of those people like you can feel free to talk to me um when i was 18 years old um like the probably the worst thing i did was when i was 18 i had my hair in locks and that was that was like one of the worst things i've done probably maybe the worst and that hurt a lot of people and a lot of people still hold that against me. And I just want people to know, like, that's not who I am. Like, that's who I thought I was when I was a teenager. Like, I didn't understand racism. I didn't understand privilege at all. Um, and I really just, like, I didn't understand. I was ignorant. Really, really ignorant. I didn't understand. I grew up in a very conservative town, a very conservative household where Fox News was always on, too. So, like... And my school wasn't really teaching about racism. Like I'm in grad school now and I'm taking classes specifically about um, social justice and racism and um, these types of issues that are so important to talk about like in elementary school, in middle school, in high school. It's like information that I didn't have until now. And you know, I'm paying for my education and learning and growing as much as I can. And I feel like I only have like 1% of the information that like I need to be a better person. And I feel like I'm just going to keep learning and learning. Like I might be in school the rest of my life so that I could be educated and I could 
be the best version of myself that I could possibly be. And it's a privilege to be, to be able to be educated. That is a privilege. My white skin is a privilege. Um, growing up in a middle-class town is a privilege. G growing up going to a nice high school is a privilege. Like all of these things are privileges that I have and have had my entire life, which has, has made my path easier. It has made it easier for success, right? Um, and that's that's true. That's true. And, you know, there's people that want to argue that, that like I don't have any privilege because I'm trans and people tried to tell me that my whole life. But like being trans doesn't erase all the privileges that I have. Like I have a lot, an enormous amount of privilege. Um, and if I wasn't, trans like that privilege would be more but being trans doesn't erase the privilege that i have like my skin is white you know i have enough money to buy food and pay rent that's a privilege a lot of people don't have that too many people don't have that i mean one person not having that is messed up enough you know um like we should all have these things and I mean, you know, my life was in the public eye and like I made these mistakes and I, I really didn't understand privilege. And I wish I understood earlier. I wish they taught it in school. I wish that I read more books. I wish I knew what books to even read, you know, um, but I didn't know. I was ignorant. I was super ignorant and blind. Like, um, and I'm getting less and less ignorant as the years go by. Um. When I got sober, a lot of things changed for me and I was finally able to learn and open up and be more awake um, and just be able more willing to learn and be able to actually retain information that was being said to me or that I was learning on the Internet. Um, I'm very willing, willing to learn. I've been sober seven years and I read all the time and it's very important to me to be as educated as possible. Like um, one of my at one of my speeches recently. A, a youth asked me, what could I do to be a better activist? And I said, learn as much as you can. Educate yourself as much as you can. Listen to other people's stories. Really listen to other people's stories and know when you shouldn't talk, you know, when you should stay silent. And I've had to learn that over the years too. I've been like put on stage, you know, and put in speeches and put on this and that. And um, there's probably a lot of times where my voice wasn't actually needed you know, that like a black trans person's voice would have been a lot better. Um, so now I'm more aware of the space that I take up. And of course, I could always be better. I could always do better. And I will strive. I will always strive to do better as well. Um, and that means too, like if anyone has been hurt by my hair, the way I had my hair, um, me not understanding privilege, um, I'm willing, I'm 100% open to having conversations, one-on-one -on -one conversations, private conversations if you want. It could be on a comment board if you want. It could be public if you want. Um, but I'm always willing and I'm always willing to grow as a person and educate myself. I know that it's not anyone else's responsibility or job to educate, um, me or anyone else. Um, so I take that responsibility and being a public figure, I know that that is my responsibility too, is is to get educated and listen, really listen to other people's voices and stories and read as much as I possibly can, not ignore what's going on in the news and stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm going to keep talking about this. Like, it's, it's hard to talk about. And um, there was a time in my early sobriety where I had a a mental health crisis. It was it was bad. It was really really bad. Um and one day I'll open up more about it. But it was a really difficult time for me. Um and it was the this happened after I went through a very violent situation that maybe one day I'll talk about that too. Right now I that's hard for me to talk about um publicly right now. But I was um in an attack and it was, it was really bad. Um, but that made my mental health decline very badly, very quickly. Um, and it led me to having to withdraw a lot from politics, from being an activist for a little while because I needed to take care of myself. And there were some people in 
my hometown and people that were in circles that I was in that were extremely mad at me for not engaging in politics at that time. And I understand why they were mad. And I also couldn't speak up and be like, well, you know, I'm really needing to stay away from this right now because my mental health is not good. And now I know, like, I could say that, like, I could, I could let people know what's going on, let them know that, like, my mental health is suffering right now and I can't take this on. I can't carry this and survive if I'm carrying this. And that's what the case was then. And um, there's people in my hometown that still hold this stuff against me. And when I was, I was young in my 20s, young 20s, like 20, 21. Um, and all this stuff like happened around the same time, 18, 19. Um, so, you know, there's things that we learn over time, there's things that I wish I knew way sooner. Like, I didn't know that the word gypsy was derogatory. So there was a, there's two songs that I wrote when I was like 15 that have that word in it. And when I sing them live, I do not sing that word. I replace it with a different word every time. Um, like in Cocaine Crazy. I mean, I wrote that was when I was like 18 or 19, but Instead of saying gypsy eyes, I say whiskey eyes. And I mean, it's a totally different meaning, but it, it works for the song. So I don't say those words anymore. And like the words that people have told me that are offensive, like that word, I don't say that anymore. Um, and I don't use that, you know, I don't use it anymore. I don't need to use that to lift my songwriting because there's other, a lot of other words to use. Um, so if something's offensive, like I, you know, I hear that and I respect that and I want to honor that. I want to honor people. I want to honor my fans. I want to honor people that don't, don't like me either. You know, if you're hurt by something, I'm always open to talk about it. And my, my DMs are open. My email is open. The YouTube comments will be open on this video. And this might, you know, I might make some more videos too about this, but I, the pressure that I have been under my entire life, my entire teenage years. I mean, I didn't grow up having a normal teenagehood and I acted out a lot, mostly with drugs and alcohol. And that didn't affect many people other than me, which is good. But I, I was kind of a dick back then too. Like in high school, like I took on this like ego persona because I was being bullied so much and my, my parents weren't accepting me yet. And um, my extended family definitely wasn't accepting me. And I felt really alone and isolated. And I felt very much like I had to be so defensive to survive. And I mean, that wasn't a cool way to be. And I'm sorry, like, if that hurt anyone too. And I, um, you know, that's not who I am. That's not who I am. That's not who I am today. Like, you know, I, I see myself as a person that just wants to help other people. Like, yeah, I'm a musician. Yeah, I'm an actor. But like most of all, like I just want to be a good activist. I just want to be a good person in the world and I will do anything to be better, to do better. Um and that's why I'm educating myself in graduate school. And that's why I read. I read a lot. I read a lot and um learn about history because it's important. And a lot of it in like high school like they like sugarcoat it a lot, you know? Like, so a lot of that you have to go into on your own and learn to be better. Um, yeah, and never watch Fox News. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's been, it's been a rough time. And I mean, this has caused me a lot of mental stress, like that my whole life has been broadcasted since I was 13. Um, it's caused me a lot of stress. I've been like scrutinized for a lot of things. I've been tried to be canceled for a lot of things, not a lot, but a few things, but like, it hurts, you know, and, and it hurts because I truly do not want to hurt anyone. Like knowing that I hurt someone or offended someone hurts me. Like I'm very, very empathetic. And I hate knowing that like my actions or who I was when I was a teenager hurt other people. Like that makes me want to like curl up into a ball and cry. Like, and I have, I have cried. I've had like breakdowns over this. Like I, I hate knowing that I hurt other people. Um, that is the last thing I ever want in my life. You know, I want to help people. I want to lift people up. And I feel like I have, you know, I have in my life. So yeah, 
I want to stay accountable. I want to remain accountable. Accountable. I want to remain honest. Um, so that's why I'm talking about it. And I will do my best to continue to learn. Um, it never ends. Learning never ends. Things change too. Like things that were politically correct years ago aren't now, you know? So we all need to learn, evolve with the times, listen to minority groups, listen to people that their voices aren't as loud or amplified because of who they are. Not because of who they are, but because of how they look, right? So I have a lot to learn. I know that. And I will continue. I promise I will continue to learn. I'll continue to grow. I'm not who I was when I was a teenager. Not at all. Like, that's not me. I'm not who my parents are. I'm not who conservative people from my hometown are. I'm not who I was when I was a teenager. I'm not who... I'm not the news that I was forced to listen to when I was a kid growing up. That's not who I am. Um... So yeah, I just want to say that like I'm a I'm a different person than I was when I lived on Long Island and I will continue to evolve and grow hopefully in all good ways and I make mistakes like everyone else. I'm not a saint. Um, you know, I've done wrong just like everyone else. And the thing is is like I've done wrong and I'm willing to be to stay accountable, I'm willing to apologize and really mean it. I'm willing to make amends, which counts more than apologies. Um, and I will remain willing. I'm, I'm not defensive about any of this stuff. I used to be because I felt threatened, but I'm not defensive about it anymore. You know, not everyone has to like me. Not everyone has to be my friend. But, you know, I have love for everyone. And I mean, even the people that are totally against me, I wouldn't wish any harm on them at all. So... That's who I am. So um, I'll keep talking about it. But thank you all for listening. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I love all of you so much. And thank you for the support, too. All right. Bye.